All right, welcome back, Kyle Mohan Racing. We're talking rotary. It's all about the brap. I've got a pair of 12A stationary gears and a few bearings in front of me. I figured it's a great opportunity to compare both a competition style racing 12A stationary gear to an OEM 12A stationary gear. Now, first of all, 12A stationary gears, uh, specific gear height, different than a 13B. So if you put a 13B gear next to it, the 13B gear height is taller based on the total gear length. So that's an easy way to identify 12A or 13B stationary gears is obviously the 12A is shorter than the 13B. Now getting into options, you can always utilize the OEM just straight bearing, it has no back cut, um, great flow, very reliable um, style gear. But for a long time, we've been able to get or take 13B gears and modify them to be the same height as a 12A stationary gear. And if you modify or utilize one of the competition or late model 13B or RX-8, stationary gears which is either hardened or has the multi-window bearing capacity then you're gonna end up with a much better version of a stationary gear now originally you were able to buy I believe through Racing Beat, Mazda Tricks, Mazda Comp uh, 12A multi-window gears and I believe at one point Racing Beat even offered uh, their version, which was the three-window 12A stationary gear. Unfortunately, some of that has been discontinued, so I don't think you can pick one up through Mazda Competition or Mazda Speed today, but you still do have aftermarket companies, uh, Mazda Tricks, Atkins, Racing Beat, out there modifying 13B stationary gears to fit within the specifications of the 12A stationary gear. And that was kind of a nice thing about the 12A, is because it's smaller than the 13B and there's still a lot of 13B components out there, you can take, like I said, one of those late model 13B or RX-8 gears, cut it down. It's a very hard gear. This isn't something you're doing at home. You're not doing this with a grinder. This is done on a lathe, carbide, diamond cutting bits, or a CNC mill. Uh, but you are able to take that hardened gear and cut it down. I should mention that those late model gears are hardened, and that's another benefit to having one of these competition style or race bearings. Now, in most of your 12As, most of your street builds, most applications, an OEM bearing setup is perfectly fine. I very rarely ever see stationary gears fail. Um, usually that is something that's completely unique and usually takes some type of ingestion of external component, meaning like somebody drops a bolt in the motor or something goes in through the intake. Pretty much stationary gears, very reliable under even mild to high performance situations. And as you get into those high performance situations, one of the only things that's really going to fail, it's never the gear, never the casing itself, it's the bearing. Um, and the bearing itself isn't really changing in materials, we're just allowing for more oil volume to enter to allow that bearing and that viscous oil to float the shaft at high RPM, high torque, high load, high boost. Whether it's a 12A or 13B, people have done some amazing things with them. There's been drag cars, road race cars, airplanes, drift cars, rally cars, all built on 12As, uh, 12A street ports, 12A bridge ports, uh, peripheral ports. I've even seen some 12As go into the 10, 11, 12,000 RPM, and I don't recommend it, but obviously if you're going for high RPM, you need to have higher oil pressure and more volume to back it up. And the limitation of the OEM gear became oil bearing volume at the main bearings. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's not just holes cut in there. There's actually a groove cut into the stationary gear that allows the oil to fill up behind the bearing and then pressurize itself out all around the shaft. As where the OEM style from 12A 
80s is just pressurizing into the groove and then spilling out and filling up around the shaft. So it should be a visually obvious situation where you have the ability to flow substantially more volume into a multi-window bearing gear setup than you do a base OEM setup. Now, along with your multi-window bearing and gear setup, um, it's very advisable to increase oil volume and pressure because you are displacing more volume and pressure. So in most Mazda tricks and KMR builds, if we were applying these types of stationary gears or making the upgrade to a multi-window, it would be because it is a race motor or higher end performance motor needing more oil flow. And then you're also going to need a competition oil pump, which produces more volume. And then that could be backed up with a competition regulator or some type of aftermarket oil regulator that's going to increase oil pressure. So with your multi-window stationary gears and bearings, we'd also often competition pump to increase volume and then competition regulator to increase pressure. That way the motor has sufficient volume and pressure to sustain high RPM while utilizing competition-based components. So there you go. That's kind of cool stuff. Um, your, oil, your OEM uh, multi-window bearings have little holes like this, so it's able to spill out around the shaft. Your aftermarket three windows from Racing Beat looked like this. Uh, these were very, very uh, good. I used them in a lot of my race motors. I saw them used around in tons of race motors. Um, also fantastic. And then here you have just your, your base bearing. Um, and it is notable that uh, these dimensions are very similar to your race dimensions. Um, so it's not a dimension thing, although we do polish and modify our internal specs slightly, depending on the build. It really is more about oil volume and flow in a rotary motor to keep them alive, provided there is proper alignment to the motor and proper, proper shaft to bearing tolerances. Um, so I hope this helps. You know, I often get questions about rotary engine builds. What should I use? Where does it apply? Here you have some great information about OEM multi-window, aftermarket three window, OEM non-window, and a little bit of when to apply them. And also, if you're applying this and you are planning on getting to those high RPM, high horsepower, whatever it is, higher end levels, then you're probably going to need to back it up with oil pumps and regulator upgrades as well. Um, but even though competition Mazda discontinued the multi-window 12A, if you do some internet searching, talk to Mazda Tricks, talk to the rotary shops out there, you can't find them. And this is just a good old... 12a oem gear from the 80s that we cleaned up for the video so still remarkably usable and in in good shape so i hope that's helped that's a little bit of main bearing rotary engine 12a stationary gear knowledge comment down below if you got any questions if i missed anything um, always happy to add more to the channel about these topics maybe we'll do 13b's next because 13b gears do have a little bit more variety of options throughout the year span and uh, can be identified visually depending on what makes and models they came out of so maybe next video we'll talk about 13b stationary gears so that's a wrap i'm out of here i gotta go do some work we've talked about gears and bearings thanks so much for watching and enjoying the channel rotary out